Hi, today we're talking to Marilyn Allen, literary agent with the Allen O'Shea Literary Agency. Marilyn, thanks for coming today. Oh, my pleasure. So first of all, are people still buying books? Oh, they're buying more books than ever. I was reading an LA Times report recently and it mentioned that book sales last year were up 6.2 percent. Okay, and in 2012? That's right, Great. that's right. And we're seeing more and more books bought, enjoyed, read on e-readers and old-fashioned p-books, so... Okay, so that's good news for writers out there. Absolutely. And what about um, self-publishing versus traditional publishing? Is most of that going towards self-publishing, or how do you think that's breaking down? We're seeing increases in both areas. Um, traditional publishers are publishing more and more, particularly in the fiction category, thrillers and romances and genre. Genre books. Right. Readers just can't seem to get enough. Young adult is another hot category. Um, I was in New York City at publisher meetings yesterday with three publishers, and every one of them mentioned they were buying more and more young adult, historical romances, thrillers. But we're also seeing a big increase in self-publishing. Mm -hmm. A lot of people feel like that's the fastest, easiest route for them to go for right. their book project. Mm -hmm. This is the book we're talking about today. It's um, book proposals and query letters. And one of the reasons I love this book is because um, I can hear your voice in it. You know, you're, you're no nonsense, but you've got a great sense of humor. And so it Thank makes you. this easy reading, but essential reading because if you want to get published and you're going to approach an agent, you've really only got one chance with that particular agent. Isn't that right? I think that's so true. We're inundated with emails and pitches, so I probably see three, four hundred pitches every couple of days. So I tell writers, be smart, be professional, do your homework. I'm always looking for new clients, but you know, I need you to be smart, well prepared know your category, mm -hmm. research the competition, mm -hmm. and come to me with a smart plan about your book. Right. Three to four hundred? Uh, yes. By email? Uh, by most, all, almost all of them are by email these days. Wow. Okay. So what does your agency specialize in? Tell us, tell us that. Absolutely. We really specialize in practical nonfiction these days. Mm -hmm. We sell a lot of health books, a lot of cookbooks, Practical nonfiction also includes business books, mm -hmm. parenting. I'm always looking for interesting science books, history, biography, mm -hmm. those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And I know on your website it says um, select fiction. What does that mean? Select fiction. We've sold fiction projects through the years, but we've just found it's gotten very, very competitive. Occasionally we'll take on a thriller or a mystery or a young adult if the author is published already, or we've dealt with them in the past, or they're an exceptional talent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But many agencies specialize in those they categories. They do, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you can go out and find a different agency that you Absolutely. have to know what the agency specializes yes, in. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And Literary Marketplace and other reference books mm -hmm. can kind of direct writers to appropriate agencies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Writers Digest. Writers Digest is online. a good one. There's an online thing yes. that you can join and mm -hmm. you can search under your category. and. Um, get to the right people that way. This is very comprehensive. It has five parts, really soup to nuts, yes. um, from how to get your for how to get your book published. You mention in here that you go to conferences. Now why what what's the benefit to a writer of going to a conference and meeting you? Well I think all writers should try to go to conferences. I think they'll learn a lot from being with other writers. It's a chance to meet agents and editors and publishers. And most of all, I think it's a chance to just see the business side of publishing mm -hmm. sometimes. Mm -hmm. I find writing's a very lonely business. And to get to a conference and just start chatting with yeah. people and it's having always a fun. Right, yeah. and network. It is fun. And, yeah. and I think you grow as an artist mm -hmm. and you start to understand the business part of publishing. Mm -hmm. that it's critical that you're really smart about your work. Right. And how should a writer approach you at a conference? And how should they not approach you? Well, I actually recently had somebody follow me into a stall in the ladies' room at a hotel. So don't do that. But, <laughs> but I'm easy to talk to. So if you see me, come on over and talk to me. Mm -hmm. And most agents I find and editors who go to conferences tend to be kind of the type of people that want to give They're back. They're happy to be talked to. Yes. Right, they right. want to talk to mm -hmm. people. 
I'm hearing more and more from publishing executives that they like to give back. They mm -hmm. like to help writers. Mm -hmm. Approach me conversationally. Don't right. try to sell me. Right. Find out what I'm interested, what our agency's looking for. So do the research on the website Ex first. Exactly. Right. right. And I like to help people even if I cannot represent them all. Mm -hmm. So use it as an opportunity to just widen your world. Mm -hmm. and so if someone has a book that doesn't necessarily suit you and they come across you, they can still tell you about their book and you can give them some pointers for how the next steps. That's exactly right. I talk a lot in the book about fiction and children's books, even though I don't really specialize mm -hmm. in those areas. When I worked on the publishing side for many years, I did work on those, so I can help probably anybody in almost any genre. I also know a lot of people, so right. we love to match make. Do you? you? Know, this isn't for me, but can I introduce you to an agent friend or that kind of thing. And will you do that also with emails that come to you or is that really only if someone meets you at a conference? Most commonly when I meet somebody in person, um, but occasionally on an email too. I'll say mm. this isn't right for me, but I think it would be perfect. You can see it's you. good. Yes. Yeah. So when you work with your partner, you mm. do you have completely different taste? No, we end up doing a lot of the same kinds of books. Huh. She's a fabulous cook and chef and she loves sophisticated restaurants. I tend not to do those, but I do lots and lots of vegan books and gluten-free and cooking and health, um, those kinds of things. I do quite a few business books. That category does not interest her. So um, there's some overlap, but also some specialization. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Do you, um, in your email queries, do mm -hmm. you see one mistake all the time? I see a lot of mistakes, yeah. and maybe we should just chat about yeah. a few of those. You have to grab me very quickly, or any agent quickly. First sentence. First sentence has to be, I would work on that over and over and over. Mm -hmm. Grab me by the throat and say, <laughs> read my email. A lot of people start talking my name or my manuscript is 69,123 right. words. Boring. Boring, boring <laughs> deadly boring. Try to make a connection and immediately. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something. And also what you have in here is bad examples and good examples. I thought that was very helpful. Yeah. I hate to teach bad things, but sometimes we're all guilty. And if you I see read them it, all thinking, ooh, have I written one like this? I didn't want to see my... Ex ex yes. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And a key thing in the beginning is to make that connection. I bought your book or I met you right. at a conference mm -hmm. or... I write just like an author of yours. Something personal, personal that says the author knows who you are. They've done their homework. It yeah. says a lot very quickly. Yes. Are there common traits in the authors that you um, represent who've been successful either in getting your representation or going on in their career? Are there common traits? There are a lot of them. Um, the authors that I love are doing their life's work. Mm -hmm. You know, many of them are helping people with their retirement plans or helping kids with allergies mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. you know, they're doing their life's work and they have a lot to say in that space. I find it tough when people come to me and they say, I can write about anything. Uh, yes, so, no good. That's no good. No. I call that shoe shopping. Mm -hmm. What's in your heart? What do you yes, want to write about? Yeah. And also that doesn't work anymore for authors because when you're building a platform, your platform has to be about who you are as a writer. It can't be about every different thing that's popular at the moment. That's absolutely right. Yeah. And you, Tessa, you just stole the word right out of my mouth. <laughs> I was going to say, nope, no, <laughs> perfect. I was going to say, but it's so key that people have a platform these days. Publishers want to know how are you going to reach your audience. Okay, so let's be specific here. What okay. numbers are we talking about? Like how many Facebook likes? How many Twitter likes? Uh, well, followers. It's, it's hard to say because it depends on the category, mm -hmm. but I find, for example, at McGraw-Hill, if I'm selling a business book there, they want people to have 40,000 names, that kind of threshold, whether it's a newsletter or... Anywhere. So it could be yes. email or it could be followers or exactly. it could be likes. 40,000. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's yeah. one example. Okay. But I have um, a young blogger, and she has 700,000 people following her. So wow. the publisher was... What's she blogging about? She's blogging about gluten-free cooking. So she's got a huge community, a huge following. Wow, that is now, huge. the challenge for her is going to be what can she say new that she hasn't sort of given away on her blog. But what I tell my clients to do hmm. on a marketing page is to bullet every single tangible thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm part of this group. 
Yeah. I gave this speech last week to 200 people. Mm -hmm. My Facebook is growing by 10% a year. You know, concrete, concrete things. Growing, mm -hmm. legitimate. Mm -hmm. How much should an author expect to budget over, say, a year to get some of these numbers? I mean, how to get to face 10,000 Facebook likes or? It's hard to say, but I suggest that. It, Truthfully, it's a 10-year program Okay, that start today and work on it and build it if this is the work you want to do. Mm -hmm. Every day work at it, build it. There's no magic switch on the back of your computer. There's no service you can buy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. you got to spend it. You have to do the hard work. <laughs> And I would say that just keep at it every day Yeah, and it will come. And so um, is there one, apart from a platform, is there one personality trait that you see in successful authors apart from doing the life's work? I mean, are they just very diligent? Do they all have connections? Did some of them come to you just out of the blue and have taken off? That's a complicated question and yeah. a good one. I see passion as at the core. I see collaboration and cooperation. Okay. Um, I had a young author just accept a lesser offer from a publisher because they publish beautifully in the area she wants to work in. Right. They publish beautiful illustrated books. So you have to be logical and understand your own brand. And not be desperate. Not be desperate. Yep. I'm in the process to help you and work with you, but it is a long process. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. like, and isn't it also the case with an advance that um, it almost doesn't matter, it's the royalties that are more important? It's the royalties, and I think sometimes it's getting the first core book right. If you want to build a series right. or publish a lot, mm -hmm. it's critical that the first book has a powerful message, right. that it works. Right. Mm. And what about, um, let's say someone's got a full-time job, they've got kids, they're, they're busy, how are they going to handle the writing and the getting the query letter right for you okay. and how do they do the platform as well? How do they It's exhausting. Right? <laughs> no, we're we're also exhausting. exhausting. I know. I think don't rush it. Don't rush. Just work at it. I feel like so many of the queries I see are rushed. Oh. You know, I've done my I've been writing for a year and a half, two years, five years. Here's the query letter. Just do it all smart and intelligently. Mm -hmm. I would also say get up early. Yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah. Not what you wanted to hear, but before before your day starts. Right. So take your time. Use perhaps your best energy in the morning Absolutely. before you're exhausted. Uh, before your right. children have to get off to school. Right. And... I would add to that, find a group, you know, find That's a... That's a great tip, yeah. yes. Well, a group, it doesn't have to be a class, you know, it can mm -hmm. be online, it can be at your local bookstore, your Barnes & Noble, wherever. But just get a core group of people who wish your best success. You know, they wish you success and are willing to help you. And when you get tired and fed up, then it's they're there you know, to support there. you. Yes. I think that's yeah. a good idea too. And do you think it's okay for authors just to focus on one area of platform building? So just Facebook or just Twitter or Reddit or whatever's appropriate for them? Or do you think they need to be everywhere? I think it's probably better to have one solid place where whether it's Pinterest for mm -hmm. your canning projects mm -hmm. or I think it's probably best to focus on one and go from there. Another tip, go where the traffic is. Mm -hmm. If you can be a guest blogger on a very heavily trafficked site, right. people will start to follow you and come over to your space. Mm -hmm. Instead of building it, sometimes borrow it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, share your content even exactly. though perhaps not too much so that you're not exhausting yourself with Gratis writing. Exactly. But, but some. some people are discovering you and finding you and mm -hmm. want to know more about you. Mm -hmm. And I know that you have a number of um, best-selling authors, mm -hmm. but of the books that you've done, is there one, or the series, is there one that you're the most proud of? Well, I have so many, and they're all my children. I truly do love them. Yeah. The royalty reports come in, and it's like their report cards. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my really? babies. Oh, I'm so passionate. I would say at the moment I'm particularly fond of a young woman named Julie Morris, and she self-published a book called Superfood Kitchen, which was gorgeous. And I brought it to Sterling, the publishing company owned by Barnes & Noble. Mm -hmm. They took it over immediately and wow. proved it slightly. It's been a huge bestseller. And what sort of platform did she have at that time? She um, works with a natural food company, and mm -hmm. she's a spokesperson. Okay. She's also done a lot of work with Whole Foods and mm -hmm. a lot of 
vegetarian vegan conferences. Did she have 900 zillion people following her? She had a passionate, loyal consumer base. Mm -hmm. And she does beautiful recipes, beautiful photography. Huh. So she's gone on now to do superfood smoothies. Oh. And in just a few months, 75,000 copies have sold. <gasps> wow. Superfood juices. She's really? working on superfood snacks. So there's an example where I think she got the core book right. Mm -hmm. And the follow-up books are just doing beautifully. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. If um, an author does self-publish their mm -hmm. book, what is what conditions have to be in place for them to then be able to sell to a traditional publisher? I think they have to show a really good product even if they've done right. it themselves. Mm -hmm. And many self-published books are really poorly done. Mm -hmm. So if you're mm -hmm. going to go that route, use professionals. Use professionals. Yeah. Hire an editor, a designer. a designer. Exactly. You've you've heard this right. from, from <laughs> you, you want it to be attractive. Yeah. And you better make it work. Um, this young woman. Meaning sales. Sales, yeah. exactly. Is there a level? Could you say, you know, if you sell 1,000 copies, 10,000 copies? You better be getting near 10,000. Okay. For most categories, if you want a publisher to pay attention. Okay. And so if someone sends an email query letter to you and they have self published, what would have to be in there? Are, are you open to that? Just as open as you would be if it hadn't been self published? I am if it's well done. Okay. Yes. And oh, so I've sold exciting. quite a few. Do you have any funny stories? Funny stories? Oh, yeah. I have. You know me. I have a million. <laughs> where to start? Where to start? Well, we but don't make us feel bad. But don't make writers feel bad. Oh, the, the, oh no, no, <laughs> none on that. But no. this, a, a lot of them say we'll get rich together. Okay. We'll be millionaires if you take this on. It just they strikes really me do? so fun. Oh, I hear that a lot. Do you? It strikes me don't so funny. Don't say that. And one young man recently wanted to do a book on how to make a million dollars. And I said, so how did you do it? And he said, I haven't yet. <laughs> well, how are you going to teach it? You haven't teach it? I said, start with yourself. <laughs> what did he say? He, he looked at me absolutely shocked, like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is funny. So, so come from a place of credibility. Uh, yes. Yes. Have done what you're saying you can teach mm -hmm. and have a platform, have, you know, be speaking somewhere or, you know, Create that platform. Follow the steps in the book, and that's right. And that will give you the information. Oh my, that is funny. Okay, well, Marilyn, thank you so much oh, for coming. I'm delighted to have spent this time with you. <laughs> thank you, and thanks for joining us. See you next time. Mm -hmm.